the light that will shine, shine, shine on your mind, mind, mind. Yeah, so bright, 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 bright that will shine, shine, shine. Bright, 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 on your mind, mind, mind. Yeah, so bright, bright. Is it birds or something? Hello. 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 Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, so is this live or, or pre-record? No, no, pre-record. We have all the time in the world. We can uh, relax and lean back and just chat like we like we do. I think that's much better. We we had pictures afterwards and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Today we have lots of topics to talk about. You know, we would love to to discuss a lot about the Renaissance era and to discuss Renaissance discoveries, symbolism, and, you know, we just wrote down so many things, you know, all this, all this week. So, you know, discuss the philosophers, artists, you know, dwell deeper into what they had left for us, you know, and their discoveries. To talk about such huge minds like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Marsilia Piccina, Brunelleschi, and, you know, many, many, many others, you know, so just to trace their footsteps and to, to trace them with you, Santos, to reveal mysteries about that forgotten, but again, you know, just uh, remembering that hermeticism, or just better to say in this day, syncretism, as, as you very beautifully express in your science. So, yes, and maybe first of all, we'd like to introduce maybe symbolism and to talk about that. So, Stefan, can you maybe start with, with that yeah we we were talking a little bit about the problem of the uh, free will and and how uh, symbolism uh it attracts us you know there's a lot of arguments for free will and a lot of arguments against free will and uh um are the things determined how we how we're doing things you know how we for example building uh houses how we're building our communities how we how we make architecture how we make art is it all predetermined you know or, or where's our free will there and how do um symbols that are right in our face um subconsciously get us to 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 do or to act in a certain way um and how we later on reflect that in our own uh, uh manifestation you know physical manifestation our word whatever, whatever we do whatever we build if we built and create something i hope we are you know that that is a crazy problem i think um well just right before maybe i can say i i do believe in free will you know uh, i think william james said it said it best when he kind of um said you know if you if you don't believe in free will then why bother bringing an argument <laughs> you know because it's all predetermined anyway. You're just here to do that anyway and to ask. So um, that's yeah. But we did you receive uh, that one picture that we sent you? Uh, we had sent you a little um, about plot. Warner Bros. Yeah, the, the Warner Brothers picture. Just as an example, you know the the Warner yeah. Brothers logo. If you know it, yeah. Um, you know. It's really fascinating, you know, how they are playing with the symbols and, you know, you know, a symbol is, is like not only an image, you know, as people are seeing it as, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly an invitation for us, you know. You're talking about the logo for Warner Brothers? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I just, yeah, yeah. just sent you the picture now. Can you see that? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's very interesting, you know, how they are just instantly showing to your eyes like Warner Bros. pictures, like Time Warner. So they are just, you know, as far as we see in this in this reality, that nothing can be played without free will, you know. You can't play this game, you know, without answering to the calling. So those symbols, you know, those Masonic elite symbols or, you know, even the church, science, everything has symbols to to make that contract with, with the people to have this game, you know. And people are not going to to look deeper in that, and they just thinking it's only an, an, an image or something, and they are just answering subconsciously to that. And after that, as a conclusion, they are suffering, and the 
they are just blaming, as they say, them. And who are they? They are just only we ourselves. So how do you see that, Sandos? Yeah, yeah. Look, um, have a look at um, warner. It's to warn. So they're warning you. You see, the mm -hmm. television, the television has two words in it. It has tell to tell and vision to see. Mm -hmm. So everything, everything is a light and sound show. Light is sound. Sound is light. Everything in the universe is a light and sound show. So what do you get with a television? Well, you can hear it. It tells you. It talks. And you can see it, the vision. So it's a television. It tells you and it gives you vision. You see, so they are warning you. And, and time warner, of course, uh, time backwards is the word emit. Time emits. So, and time is also, well, tempo. Temp is time, tempo. Kronos, Saturn, Atom. So again, all words go back to Atom, Atom, Atom. And so time is just, well, it's old man time, Timmy. Uh, Tommy and Timmy, you know. Yep. Tammuz, Tammuz is Thomas, Dominus, um, and all of those, Tommy and Timmy. And so what they're doing here is basically when, when they do these, these logos, I mean, I mean this, this um, Warner Brothers, you can see um, you can see 666 written all over it. You see the W, for instance. Um, you can see a, a W on the top of the, 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 mm -hmm. the symbol. On the left and on the right, you see the two W's on the, the left and the, the right. Shield, on, the, yeah. mm -hmm. on the shield, yeah. And then you see the W. Well, this is, you know, basically this is just um, six, six, six. They're very clever. They're really, um, they are. They're quite um, the people that are doing this. They're quite. Um, what's the word? They're very, very pretentious, and they're very. Um, conceited and uh, arrogant when they do this you know they think that that um, because they've studied in um, elite schools and they're and they've got fat head diseases and and so forth and they can do all of these clever symbols but they don't know the true spiritual meaning of them of course they use the power of the symbols mm. Um, they have no idea of the true meaning of them. They never will because they're flesh, they're fleshly incarnated animals, really. Um, and, but they're, they're so conceited and they think they're so smart when they do this and they put words, they always have clever words that mean 10 different things than what you think they mean in their, in their logos. You've got to look yep. carefully. You've got to look real carefully. Yeah, yeah, and they they have to show us. That's the only thing that they know. That they have to show us to get us to, as Christina said, play the game, to get us involved. Um, and that that is all that logo shows. A Time Warner Entertainment Company. You know, yes. a Time Warner Entertainment is you know enter and attain the mind, or or enter and taint the mind. As you say, there's always many words, combinations in there that you can look at. Um, time Warner. Yeah, it warns you right there. Yeah, yeah entertainment's another tricky word um, because I can see the word Tom three times in entertainment. <laughs> Firstly, in the, in the first three letters, ENT. E-N-T is an anagram for ten, a ten. Saturn. Then you have Tain. T A I N. That's just Tan. Um, you know, Atan. 
and then ment at the end. You see that the other ent at the end? Well, that's ten again. So it's all about containing. There again, tain, contain um, our, our attention, our, um, our focus, capturing our focus, trying to control it, divert it, distract us through entertainment. Now, are we, the philosophical types that we are, are we interested in being entertained? No, no, we're interested in being enlightened. That's all we're after, and that's all we're doing, and that's all we get, enlightenment. Um, you know, entertainment is for the, um, you know, the bread and circus folks that Rome puts shows up for, the, the goy, the crowds, the Gentiles, the mob, the masses. Hmm. And what's the most interesting that they are, you know, powerless without our acceptance to their invitation of the symbol, you know. They are just placing those symbols for us to catch them and to follow them. So if we want, you know, see those symbols, we will not follow and we will not accept their invitation. So it just, they are just holding only that invitation. They have nothing more, you know, so it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, the colours, um, gold and blue, are very, very telling too because the sun is golden and the sky is blue. Um, and this is basically just produced by the atmosphere. It's an effect of the atmosphere because if you go outside of the atmosphere, um, you cannot see the sun. It's invisible. And, um, and of course, because the sun is really a generator of, um, well white light really <laughs> and um it uh, produces cold radiance it's cold the sun is cold there's a, the only heat in the sun is in the arcs of the flares uh, inside the sun it's totally uh, hollow and it's um and it's cold and so and so um that's what they're doing here they the 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 wb and all that gold part this is uh, basically just um the gold of the sun, you see, and the blue is the, the, the blue sky backdrop. You'll see all of this. Um, the Egyptians used to um, adore those two colours, gold and blue, gold and blue, you know. So you can see the pharaonic Egyptian bloodlines um, here. You can see the Warner brothers. Warner must be one of the elite family names, just as the Russells, the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, the Smiths, they're all... Um, you know, these Illuminati bloodlines. Look at the word Illuminati. Twice you will see, well, you'll see atom in there too. It's all atomic. Mm, beautiful. And also we see shield here, and shield also can also be looked as the shape of the pyramid as well. And we see this pyramid and this shield is upside down and, you know, crossed with that golden line as well. So, again, everything connects. Yeah, good point. Good point. You can find you'll find a lot in there as you look. You will. There's more. There's much more. There always is. There's layers and layers and layers. Yeah. 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 These signs are everywhere. You know, we get them right in our face, and but we produce them also ourselves. Uh, and um. Yeah, maybe we can switch over to um, how we reproduce that in our architecture. And um, I think... Yeah, the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, know. We would love to talk about the ancient uh, Renaissance in about 15th century and how our ancestors, you know, such huge minds, you know, discovered many things which were forgotten, you know, during, during Middle Ages and again rediscovered them. And uh, because it's very interesting topic today, because today many, many people are waking up again, you know, and discovering again that uh, lost so-called, you know, which is only forgotten knowledge and potential of their natural divinity and glory again. And what's very interesting about if we will look at the Renaissance era, which, you know, occurred in 15th, 16th century, uh, everything started mainly from the architecture, from that Gothic, very dark architecture we stepped again after looking at our ancestors in, in Greece and Egypt 
we just through architecture uh, changed so-called our bodies our cities and and we just you know evolved from that and architecture is also four words like arc it tech tech as as technology and or like to arch it te uh, technically involved to make it perfect to make it eternal and so so it also talks about divine proportions and our bodies as well and um so maybe from there and also are santos familiar with the vitruvius legend about the the roots of the of the architecture to start maybe from here yeah well um vitruvius was a um a great roman i think he was either first or second century somewhere around there um architect and uh he uh he it was that understood that um, man is the measure of the universe. That's why uh, Leonardo da Vinci drew the Vitruvian man based on Vitruvius's um, understanding of how he built his buildings and he understood sacred geometry, et cetera, et cetera. They all did, you know, um, even today, the Freemasons, um, they have inherited that wisdom. They are the masons, the, the stone builders. You know, they can build cathedrals still. They can still do them because mm -hmm. they, because they have that, that knowledge. And it's called masonry, really. And it's um, it's a true science, and it's a science of making the constellations in the heavens in cathedrals and buildings down below. You see, and um. What they're doing is making buildings that will carry electrical charge. You see, that's why a cathedral is called a cathedral, because it's a cathode. And cathodes are negative ions. Um, sorry. No, they're not. Cathodes and anodes. Um, anode is, the, is your positive terminal on a battery, and a cathode would be your negative terminal, right? Mm. And so, and they come from uh, anions and cations. A ca an anion is a positive ion, and a cation is a negative ion. So, anion cation gives you anode and cathode. And in architecture, you've got synagogues and cathedrals, and they are both the the um the the seat so to speak of where the the seat of the the their theology is enshrined you see so the cathedral would you every city will have a major cathedral they'll have a catholic cathedral right saint patrick's and then they'll have a saint paul's in melbourne where i come from there are two massive cathedrals and one is a Catholic and the other one is Church of England, of course. Church of England is St. Paul and the Catholic one is um, a St. Patrick's, you see. And so, but usually it's St. Paul, St. Peter and St. Paul, you see. The, um, the Catholics will have St. Peter. <clears throat> and so those buildings were built by the same people that ancient school of making constellations on the planet as above so below and that knowledge has been hidden and kept secret and kept with uh, the stonemasons or the freemasons you see and so that's why you get operative and speculative uh freemasonry operative is um the um the builders, the guys who actually physically go out and do it, you see. And so um, in the Renaissance, they rediscovered a lot of the ancient science. And the most important thing they discovered was the Prisca Theologia. Ficino uh, was in touch with Arabic um, merchants and scholars. And, of course, the Arabs were... Um, 
they were advancing in all areas of science. In fact, they were um, even, I think astrology was considered, um, was accepted as a science and not a pseudoscience by the um, Islamists for hundreds of years. Astrology was just, oh, the Arabs were the, the best astrologers. And, um, or should I say, that, that the Muslim, Arabic, Eastern, Moorish um, world, put it that way. And so when they came to him with um, the, Hermet the Corpus Hermeticum and, um, and other Egyptian works, Ficino immediately translated these. He became the Renaissance uh, guru, master, really, you could say. He was the, the great one. He was an astrologer, one of the greatest astrologers of all time. Um, he was um, teaching the Prisca Theologia. His um, student and pupil, um, Giovanni Pico della Mirandola, he was um, teaching syncretism. Uh, he wasn't so much of an astrologer. Pico is known for, um, for his syncretism, though. And his, um, he learnt everything from, from Ficino. And um, he was the one that went down to Rome 30 years before uh, Martin Luther with 900 theses of syncretism. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. And so they rediscovered this beautiful science. And um, I have those theses in one volume in a book at home. Um, Pico's uh, 900 Theses, and um, I've examined them, and uh, yes, he had very, very good arguments. He was going to go down to Rome and argue with the Apostolic Senate, that's what he called them, the Cardinals, Apostolic Senate, uh, and he was going to argue with them and um, prove that we have a syncretic historical theology, and um, he obviously wanted to offer that as uh, a, um, a means of, <laughs> you know, unifying the planet because obviously um, he was enlightened en enough to understand that the source and cause of all division on this planet comes from Rome, you know. That's where, it's, that's where it originates from. All roads lead to Rome, all of them, every single one of them. doesn't matter what, whether it's a electronic or whether it's a physical road or via the internet or via any other means rome is the matrix that's where everything's coming from all of the poison all of the um slave systems the whole lot of it all of it it's all roman it's a roman world when in rome do as the romans do rome was not built in a day see pay attention to those sayings they're trying to tell you They've been indoctrinating us for a long, long time. They want us to accept the Roman New World Order for the rest of eternity. These controllers, they love Rome because Rome is the perfect model of control. She rules with an iron rod. And the Renaissance was about to smash that rule. So that's why the, um, the cardinals, they sent Pico running back with his tail between his leg. And later on, they poisoned him. He died of an early age, see? But he wrote many books, and they're all beautiful books. Wonderful. Yeah, and it was very interesting that they were able to write all those knowledges and myths and allegories. And the same is, is when we look at Vitruvius legend, which, is, which, which we found in his tractate that he talks that ancient Romans had a legend about the roots of the architecture, which was basically, he said that there were two types of the architectural structures at the beginning. There were ones with the uh, circle type of the roof, which looks like cupola, and the other is like a uh, square type of the roof, you know, those two shapes of the houses. So it's just also not only talking about the, you know, material types of, of the houses, but also talks about human body and, you know, the shape of the, of this, of the cupola as, you know, awakened person and the other as in the box, as in the, as in the left brain, so it's also allegories. Beautiful. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's very interesting. So he basically talks about from here, you know, all the, all the, I don't know, subject of the uh, architecture just evolved and then went to to the pyramids, to the to the, to the churches and and so on. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure.
Um, yeah, I think the the square box room is very, very nasty for human habitation. Round is um, definitely much more conducive to all the curved lines in the human body. Nothing is straight. Yeah. And uh, al although there are tubes and channels everywhere in the body, body they all they all have some kind of kind of vortex, spiral, helix, toroidal um, curve in them. So either either rectangular or um, or circular would be the best type of habitation, but rectangular in the golden section would be ideal. Um, and Vitruvius was master of that. Um, the ratio, the golden ratio, 1 to 1.618 or 0.618. And um, the Greeks were also, you can see in the Parthenon, the Parthenon is all, <clears throat> is all golden section inspired architecture. Leonardo da Vinci, his painting, uh, spaced everything out in that um, in that ratio. It's the golden ratio, and ratio is just another word of saying God. Ra, tio, tio is dio, God, and yeah. it's radius. Radius is also uh, and radio. Uh, Marconi named the radio. Ra Dio, which means Ra God in Italian, because he said it vibrates. Ra vibrates, and so um, so ratio, radio, um, radius, Ra Dius. That's Ra God, or Ra Deus, Ra God. And so when you see a circle with a dot in the middle and a radius, you've got is Ra L. Isis is the dot, the radius is Ra, and the circle is L. And another way of saying it is pyramid. Pi is the circle, Ra is the radius, and the dot in the middle is the mid, midpoint. So P, Ra, mid. Everything's a, a, a circle with a dot in it and a radius. Everything is. That's how everything comes into existence. The dot is the spirit. The radius is the soul. And the circle is the body. Yeah, it's very interesting how the Renaissance people and the Truvias as well, they, they worked with the two shapes basically at the main soul. That was a square and a circle. The, the square symbolized the space or the body, which is pentagon, you know, pent and gone. And also we have the circle, which represents time. So we work with space, time, you know, <clears throat> manifested them. And when we, for example, take square and take circle and put them together, you know, in, in 2D reality, for example, we will get the eye of, of the Horus. So it just looks like like that. So... They knew that that uniting that space and time, they are able to create magnificent structures like cathedrals, churches, which are enabling us to achieve some, I don't know, maybe higher consciousness, but not achieve, but remember something. The same as Great Pyramid did in Egypt. Yep, 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 great, yep. And, um, and what you have, what you have with this, um, this symbol is the number 22. 22, because a circle has 12 30 degree segments on it, um, is always divided into 12. The circle, the, cir the circle is about the number 12, just like a clock face. Have a look at the circle of your clock, and there are 12 hours on that clock. That's because every circle is 12. Every radius is seven. The soul is seven. Um, and the dot in the middle of the circle, that's the Holy Trinity. 
Isis, but it's Isis and her hubby and her son, Osiris and Horus. And so what you've got is the number three, the number seven, and the number 12, 22. And 22 is basically the number you come to when you do your 3.14. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pi. It's the number 22. It comes to 22. So everything's, everything's about the number 22, you know. Um, and that circle is the perfect symbol of how creation works. Another way of doing that circle um, is basically um, the Celtic cross, you know, the cross you see on every church. That's it. That is the that is the symbol of the ecliptic. Anyway, that was a bit of a distraction. We were talking about the um, the Renaissance. So, um, and what was it? Vitruvius, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we're about to square the circle, I think. Yeah, well, um, Walter Russell has done that. If you. Uh, Study Walter Russell. He's explained how to square the circle. Hmm. You see, circles are electrical incandescent spheres of light and cubes which encase those spheres are... um, Radiant. Um, the other half of electrical force, which is the radiant half, and so it's cubes and spheres. The whole universe is cubes and spheres, cubes and spheres. Everything that is cold and um, does not have mass is from the cube. And um, and everything that is hot and is a sphere, like suns and planets, are the compression half of the electrical cycle. And that's all that's going on, cubes and spheres. The whole universe is just cubes and spheres. That's what the universe is. Yeah, and there's some, um, there's some good short videos on Matt Presti's YouTube channel. Just check out Matt Presti, P-R-E-S-T-I. And uh, there's about 18 or 19 Walter Russell units, you know, short videos there, nine or ten minutes each. And they explain this, you know, the probably the best channel around for um, Russellian science, really. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And that's how that manifests in our architecture, you know. They put a square down and put uh, a sphere on it or something like that. In in the case of the uh, Pantheon, for example, you know, it's got, it, that's got the circle squared for sure. They even wanted to build, you know, in Italy, in Renaissance, they had a plan to build the perfect city of, of, of the of the of the perfect city, you know, just just placing all, all buildings in, in beautiful places, you know, just correlating with stars, making that zodiac wheel in circles. So they knew that, but somehow that uh, project never occurred because it, it for some reasons, it, it wasn't able to, to occur. So, so what could be those reasons? Maybe it was too dangerous maybe for those times, because as far as we see, if we see the, the shape, I think I sent you the picture, of of the of that perfect city, so it's it looks like a zodiac wheel, you know, and, and at the center they have a cathedral, and on the on the sides of the wheel they have cities, they have you know the living places for people. So if the consciousness is very high, it's very beautiful to live in such city, you know, just having those signs and everything like that. But if consciousness is a bit low, you know, people are not able to receive all those energies still so it could be also not very not very useful for people because it can become not a, a place of you know growing but also a prison so are you familiar with that idea of perfect planning renaissance of the city 
Um, not too, not too much. No, I know, I know that um, all the cities are masonically uh, planned, and uh, it's not. There's no willy nilly about it, except for um, except for Rome. Funny about that. Rome is the only city in the Roman world that um, that did not follow its model of city planning, urban planning. Um, the whole world is still using the Roman system, you know, where you have the municipal um, city hall and cathedral and municipal offices and court and police station and, and all of those things pretty much all clumped around each other. But in particular, um, you know, the municipal city hall there and uh, and and all of those um, important stately and religious uh, edifices. And, of course, um, so there's, there's not much planning in them. And there's another city, uh, Sydney in Australia. Sydney is, is the same. It's, it's very, very similar to Rome. Um, there's, there's no straight roads, you know, there's very few straight roads. Everything's willing. There's no planning, you know, and, um, that's, that's an interesting thing because when you go to towns like Melbourne, very highly Masonic, everything is like the, um, the city grid has 64, um, blocks. Mm -hmm. And that's, well, that's the 64 codons, the 64 chessboard. Um, yeah, that's your matrix right there. <laughs> it's, it's wow, well, 64, you know, it's just that big number. And so uh, these, these are Masonic. Washington, D.C., <clears throat> much the same. Paris, London. These, um, these cities have all had severe Roman... Uh, urban planning work, uh, except for Rome. And so uh, it's, it's very interesting, isn't it? That's probably allowed Rome to, um, to be able to generate all the creative energy that it has in the last couple of thousand years. It's been a very, very creative city. And that would be because of the beautiful curvaceous roads and hills and the willy-nilly, you know, architecture that that um, that really was just um, <clears throat> laid out according to the natural hills. There wasn't much cutting away. They just let the hills speak to them, and they built the city on the seven hills. And they didn't go, you know, um, changing the contours here and there and putting too many straight roads in. You see. And because this will um, this will create a lot of static and hectic energy in a city, all straight roads. You know, they're not good. They're not natural. Mm. And uh, so, watch out for that one. I, that's why I live in the country now. I don't. Uh, I don't go to cities. Uh, don't like those straight roads. I don't like any of that crap out there at all. I love the nature. I'm. Uh, I walk around barefoot all day long. I um, I work in I'm working in the forest here. I'm making the forest beautiful where I'm living on a permaculture farm in the rainforest of Queensland. Um, so I pull out the chainsaw and the whippersnipper. Or I'm chopping grass and trees and making the forest beautiful. Planting fruit trees everywhere and um, you know that's that's it for me. I've, there's no way I'll be going to any cities to live anywhere near there. You know. Um, as far as away as it can be from the, you know, the barbarians and the zombies, uh, the better for me. <laughs> Sounds a lot of fun. Um, Christina, do you want to switch to the um, cup cupola? Stuff? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe just let's talk now maybe about the sacral, you know, architecture of churches and cathedrals of, of the of the Rome and all, all the rest of the world and their correlations to human body and shape. And, you know, cupola is just like cup and polar, you know, it has ability to make polar and, you know, uh, relating those polarities into one cup, you know, in order for you to to receive that that memory or something like that and it's very interesting that during the renaissance era 
people again uh, remembered how to use to use Coppola because they were for, they forgotten that and only Brunelleschi was able to to you know, Florence to by building their cathedral was able to again remember the techniques of how to build that cupola and that what's very interesting when we look at the Pantheon for example or even at the later Brunelleschi structures of the cupola we see that they usually look like the shape of our heads for example because we, we have spheres like you know and I also have the uh, um, uh, fontanelle you know in uh, at the top of our head you know the, the whole of ours you know so it's just Church is completely looking as as our body because it has the body of the of the square, and all, at, at the top of that square we have the cupola which looks like like our head. So completely correlates to our body. What do you think about that, Santos? Yeah, yeah. Look, perfect, perfect, wonderful, and I'm I'm enjoying your um your uh, pictures that you've sent me on Skype about Atom. That is marvelous what you've done here, guys. Um, that first one there, atom, head, spine, shoulders, two arms and limbs, belly and legs, reproductive organs, guys, spot on. Um, that's why I say atom is holding the secret to everything. Atom is Adam. And um, those very, very words there, the way you've, you've done that is, um, is brilliant. You you guys are you guys are really really on to syncretism. You you're you're nailing it. Well done. Yeah, and even those letters just connects to you know. For example, we have A. It looks like if we place that A to to our heads, it will form like a pyramid, and just that shape of the A, that small pyramid in in the. You know, we see we see a like two lines, and one line is connecting those two lines together. So in the middle we have pyramid. So that pyramid points to our pineal gland, and then we have T like you know shoulders. Just even the shape is is magnificent. And also, Stefan, you have something to say about the M letter? Just share today. Yeah, the M letter is uh, also you know the 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 woman uh, laying down in birthing position. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 definitely there, guys. You've you've nailed it. You've it's perfect. You gotta, um, yeah, you gotta uh, do it. I think the best way to do it is is vertically. The vertical picture is the best one. We've got Tom there. You see that? If you if you put all those um, together, those letters together vertically, like you've done there, that vertical picture. That's it. You've nailed it. That's a Tom. You see, because. Um, uh, the T, when you when you if, if A is is the head, which it is because it's the head of the alphabet, um, uh, and it's it's the head, um, then the T is uh, because the T is um, fire and earth, the fire would be the vertical member, which would be the spinal cord, I guess. Is that what you put it as? Yeah, the spinal cord, that's fire. And the earth would be the horizontal plane of your arms outstretched, right? So because that's a, everything that is a horizon has to do with earth because the earth has the horizon. And um, and then, yeah, the... the, the um, the solar plexus or the stomach or the tummy is the circle of O. Um, I would put that at the solar plexus, really, you know. Um, and then um, definitely the M is the limbs. So well done. I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying this. I'm, I'm just absolutely uh, <laughs> ec ecstatic about that, you know, what you're sharing. Um, why don't you post this on my uh, Facebook page? Okay, well beautiful. Done. And also yeah. when we have belly and we have that circle of the belly, it looks like also Libra sign. So just also correlates with, with even how the zodiacal signs look. So just um, magnificent. Yeah, yeah. And um, of course, you probably would have picked up from my presentation, Atom and the Ecliptic. I'm sure you've seen it. You guys mm -hmm. are... You yeah, guys sure. are 
you're onto it real real good. Um, I did explain there that um, the A is for ether, the T mm -hmm. is for fire and earth, the O is oxygen air, and the M is marine. And I also explained another version of atom, um, and that is how uh, how A is for ether and its unity white magnetic light. T is for two and the dividing of that light into red and blue, hence it's dealing with um, the light being crucified or killed, you see, because that's like a death. When electricity is born, um, it's 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 the the birthing of something that must die. So um, there is the light at the beginning of its path where it must return to die. But the letter T is that function. Then the O is the ecliptic, and that's the light going around the ecliptic. And the letter M is the meridians that it passes as it goes through that ecliptic. And, uh, and then in reverse, M-O-T-A, motor, is the motion or the direction in which the light uh, reverses that process and, and inspires and goes back to course. Look, this is, I mean, this is real. It, what we're talking about here really is really understandable stuff, isn't it? It's kindergarten, it's basic, it's fundamental. And yet, you know what? Most people can't bear to listen to it. Mm -hmm. this, this true knowledge <clears throat> is, them, it is, is something despicable. Um, it's, it's, no, it's, it's sounds unlettered. It, it doesn't sound, you know, um, doesn't sound right to their ears. You see something. Um, and so really it's, it's not rocket science, man. If, if mm -hmm. we can, do it, I always say, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Cause who am I? Well, I'm just, Hey, you know, I'm, um, just like anyone else. I'm country. Yeah, all, all you, right. All you really have to do is. Uh, you know, sit down and play around with it. Just no, you know, push that push that box away around you. Just go nuts. Just uh, yeah, make fun. <laughs> have fun and 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 and, and tr that that is a, that process of, of creation, taking it apart, putting it together differently. You know, and uh, you now you can you can take the whole alphabet from that atom man you, yeah. by just moving things around and. Um, the yeah, T is, mm -hmm. you know, the T right being in the middle. If you would, uh, for example, now put the T upside down and put it together, then you have an H there. You know, so you just play around, and and there, that that is right there where the where the lungs are too. So that is the breath of God, <sighs> age, and if you would double the circle, then you would get an eight, and H is the eighth letter, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Scorpio. Yes. Good point. So you you just play around, double everything, and it comes it comes right back to you, and then it's just so so rewarding for the time that you put in. So that's really all you have to do. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Good one. Very very good point. Eight and H, and they and, and they. And um, how about that? You see, you say eight and you say H. You don't say H. That's, that's yeah. bad English. It's bad English. Yeah. So isn't that interesting that they sound the same, spelt differently? H and eight. And the letter eight also has an H in it. You wonder, you wonder why. Hmm. <laughs> you know, you, you, you really got to think about that, don't you? You know what I'm saying? Just puts the pieces together. Yeah. Good point. Mm. And obviously, if you move that down, it becomes the sexual organs either way. And showing you what it's doing there, too. Yeah. 
What's the which pyramid one? head? Which, which do you see the that? one? Do you see the one with the with the three where the where there's the man and then plus atom equals, and then put it together. Uh, the three. What's the three? You said man plus atom equals the shape. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. Let's have a look at that one. Yeah, um, yeah, good one. Yeah, that's that's the one that nails it. That's the one. Yeah, and I just can't forget that you know that cupola thing and the fontanella, for example. It's just fountain of. L E E just as as energy, you know. So just like you have to open that again, which was closed for you. And in order to achieve that, again to remember that eighth letter of the ether, you know, in that atom body of 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 your incarnation. So just shows everything. Yeah, yeah, it does. It really does. Um and so you see uh the we know that Tom means man because another derivation of Adam is Dan. You know, the lost tribe of Dan. These people are looking for the, the lost tribe of Dan. Well, it's Adan, <laughs> idiots. <laughs> um, and so, but Dan in Japanese means man. Dansei, Dansei, man. Dansei. And so, Dan is an anagram for DNA. And DNA is an anagram for and, Andros, Andrew, man. And so when you see the, the letter M there at the bottom of your, your upright atom man here in this picture, you can see that that's representing man, you know, what he's, what he's walking with. Man walks. You can see that letter M is like, it, the, even just the letter M alone is really perfect representation of a walking man. Waters, you know? Pisces. Movement. Aquarius. Yeah, movement, motion. You see two legs, two stems touching the ground, and then a V, a, a vortex, a V, in a small V in the middle. That, well, that V is the pelvis, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, it's the pelvic, it's the, the, the uterus. You know, it's the... Yep. the the generative um, center, you can see it. You can see it's like a pelvis, right? And then, and the two stems of the M, those are the legs. Yeah, that that alone, that alone does it for me. Yeah. Um, but once you put the T on top of that, then that then that <laughs> shows it even clearer because the only the, only the arms can be horizontal like that. The the legs can, you know, only. Except for um, ballerinas and, and circus people, they can put their legs out horizontally like that and do um, and do what they call the um, what do they call that the, the twist or the. But anyway, um, but yeah. the end, it, it's all perfect. You see, We're, yeah, and um, you you even see the action of planting the seed. You know, the T into the O or the I into the O if you want. Um, the I O. It's also the power button. Yeah, and we have the circle of, of life in the belly, you know, as you, see, you can see, imagine it as a pregnant woman as well. So it's just circle of life which never ends, you know. Yeah, what you need to do now is um, you need to add another another stick man here and you need to make, you need to make it out of the word anatomy. So... If you uh, put your head to the right, the M is the E, and that's where it touches Earth. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, when you look at it. If uh, you want, yeah. yeah. Yeah, gotcha, yeah, of course. Yeah, all the letters, yeah, they're all the same. It's all the one letter. But there's, they're different facets of the one sound. Everything must go back to one. This is the, this is the key of... Of, of, of everything. So, you know, when you see the letter A, it's just written differently to the letter O because it's doing it's doing its archetype, it's doing its um, aspect uh, differently. 
so but it's all they're all from the same fire the same electrons you know and and the same radiation radi radiance yep no that's great anatomy no that would look good with the whole word anatomy and you know, i can i could squeeze that in there easily um you know you could put um uh n a just below the top a there perfectly and then the y down the bottom it's um you know it is, it is it is the anatomy and the body actually um you can make the letters of anatomy with your body you're actually this has proven it this proves that the physiology can actually make the letter t for tom the stomach or the solar plexus can be the 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 o you know the circle the belly it's funny how the tummy is is the belly all right. Have a mm -hmm. think about that. Have a think about that. Tummy is atom, and belly comes from bell, which is the same god as Thomas, Bellus. Bale, bell, l, electron, electricity, belly, bell, bell is beautiful in Italian, bello, bella. And of course, God, the sun, is Baal, beautiful, and so we call him Baal. Oh, he's beautiful in the morning when he comes up. The sun is so beautiful. So you always want to go and see Bell when he rises. And then you go onto your balcony, balcon, oni, on is the sun, Baal is the sun, to watch the sun set. You see, so isn't it amazing mm -hmm. that tummy and belly, tummy is Thomas, Thomas, and belly is Baal, clearly, clearly, and they both, they both enjoy <coughs> the same word, the same meaning. Yeah, I and mean, also the word stomach, for example, as well, also belly, stomach, and from stomach we have, again, the, the word tom here as well. And also we have here serpent from S and, you know. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. That's a good one. Um, stomach. In fact, I've done a, I've done a whole, <clears throat> this will be interesting. Uh, follow this one. You put your dinner on top of your tongue to chew with your dent. Um, your din din, part, and you send it past your tonsils down to your stomach, otherwise known as your tummy. <laughs> There's a whole sequence of tom toms. You see, everything is tom. So when you're speaking with your tongue, you are at actually practicing atonism. You are an atonist. All speakers with their tongues that use their tongue in speech. Aratonists. So Akhenaten had it right. Akhenaten had it 100% right. We all worship Aton. Aton. With our tongues. When we sing and speak. This is why when we sing, we, speak, we sing tunes. T-U-N. Atun. A tune. Or tones. T-O-N. Aton. <clears throat> with our tongues. Tones with our tongues. I mean, it's all there, man. I mean, uh, you you can you absolutely cannot make this up. So this is the the good part about it. You, you can't stand. I can't stand up and say, "Oh, look at me! Aren't I clever? I I discovered this." No one can do that. Yeah, I can't do that. Uh, Moses can't do that. Jesus can't do that. No one can do it. Only Prime Creator can do it through. His language of light. So when we start going around saying, oh, look at that belly sounds like tummy, and other people think, oh, that's just a silly co that's just a silly coincidence. You know, they're just, um, and, and then they're just totally unaware of all of these syncretisms. 
what they are is they are ignorant and unaware of the atomic language of light which creates all things, all effects. And what we're doing is we're just um, remembering it, remember. <clears throat> all the members are there, but they have to be joined together, remembered. <clears throat> and so, I'm, you know, I mean, uh, I might be remembering these things faster than my brother or my sister or my mother or my father or you or someone else. And I know that I am because, well, I just know that. <laughs> Most people are busy chasing stuff called money and careers and climbing corporate ladders and keeping up with a family called the Joneses that live somewhere in the neighbourhood. I don't know where, but you've got to keep up with them. Um, so I'm spending all my waking hours on syncretism. And they don't get any weaker. Every day, every day, syncretism downloads are just being just poured down prolifically and abundantly. And every day I've got notepad and pen and computer. I'm, I'm, I'm composing uh, PowerPoint presentations as I go. Okay. I got, I got hours and hours and hours of material to share with the world yet i've got tons and tons of insight um this level of atomic words that i'm dealing with um you know i'm i, I still haven't even started the the b words i haven't even um started with the c letters the letters that begin with c in creation and what they produce um I've got volumes and volumes of stuff. All I need is people to come to my aid. And you guys are really, really exciting to know, you know, because <laughs> you're doing some great stuff, guys. You're, you're going to, you know, um, be a great asset and benefit to um, syncretism um, if, if you keep going like this. Just fantastic. And so, Yes, we're uh, slightly um, ahead of our brothers in remembering this stuff, but you can't take the credit for it. It's, it's just there. If I point to something that is there, do I get the credit for it? Oh, look, the shooting star in the sky. Did I do that? No, I'm just pointing to the darn thing. At the, give the credit to the star, you know. So if I'm pointing out that belly sounds like, uh, that belly is the same as tummy and tummus is a god and Belus is a god. Uh, am I just oh, I'm just uh, just being a little bit ridiculous? You you need to take some medications and watch more TV and read the newspaper, Santos. Yeah, it seems too obvious. I, I think to some people, it's almost too playful. It, it can't be that easy, you know, and and they don't look deeper and discover that. Those those multi multiple layers really that open yeah. up once you once you just you know use that key letter. <laughs> yeah, and then, people and just then... forgot that science can be easy. You know, they just are so used to think that science is you know so hard to understand and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, there's so many of these. Uh, here's another one. Um, are you in the mood for some, some good words? Oh, please. All right. Well, this is the sort of stuff that I'm, I'm going to be dealing with from now on. You know, I'm not going to be mucking around, man. The, the real heavy stuff. Um, the ecliptic is the serpent. You see the serpent in the Garden of Eden? Mm -hmm. Again, Eden, Adam, Garden, Hedonistic. Sodom, urban, these are all, man, these are all atomic words. And so the serpent is made up of two words, Sera and Penta, hexagon and pentagon. The pentagon is ob obviously the man and the hex is the woman. How do you know? Because five is an odd number. Odd is masculine. Odom, Adam. And... Hex, six, is an even number, divisible down the middle and perfectly, three and three, six, 
and it's even, Eve, feminine number. And that's what your DNA helixes are made of. Hexagons and pentagons. And so when you look at Sarah, you can see Ceres or Sarah, the bride of Abraham. And when you look at Penta, you see nothing but an anagram for Adam, Aten. You see? Ten. You can see ten in Penta, can't you? Because ten is, well, double five, Penta. Um, and so this is why once you get seduced by the serpent, you better repent. And so this is the stuff that's going on, guys. It's the, it's the helical serpent. And, and how it works is through pentagons and hexagons. Hmm. Simple. Here's another one. Is ra -el. Is real. Real eyes. Release. Cereal. That's it. That is in breakfast cereal spelling. Series, Ra and L. Cereal. The other spelling is serial, as in serial murderer. Mm -hmm. S I. Serial. Same thing, same word. And what you see in all of those words is what Israel truly means. It's the wheel of reality, of serials, of realizing, of reality. Is real. Mm -hmm. Realize. Mm -hmm. release, release the cycle. The cycle is released. It is Israelized. When the, when the cycle begins, it is Israelized. Israel means to realize, you know, and make cereals grow and multiply and fill the earth and dominate the earth. Dominus, Thomas, the twin. Okay. It's, all, it's all about electricity, guys. And from, yeah. here come, from here comes the word Jerusalem, for example, you know. So Jerusalem are also is also J like I, then goes Ra, then goes S, Al and M. Jerusalem again. All those those as far as I see. Yeah, well well Jeru is um it's the same as Mount Meru, it's the same as mm -hmm. Heru, Jerusalem. Heru is Horus, it is um, the High Ram, it is Eris, Heru Salem, the peace of the Ram, the peace of Ra, Heru. See, Ru is Ra, Heru, the hero, hero, the goddess Hera, my wife's name, Hiromi, High Ram, um, hmm. Hiro, Japanese. Hiro is, is the most common Japanese male name. Hiro. It's a hero. You go to India and they have Hira. Hira. The great um, um, Indian guy on, on YouTube, Hira Ratan Manek, who teaches solar gazing and who is a breatharian and just, just does uh, earthing and solar gazing. Hira Ratan Manek. Look at his name. Hira the hero, Ra and Tan, that's Ra and Adam, and Manek, you know, that's, that's the moon, that's all Amen, the moon, it's all there. Everywhere you go, everything is atomic, all words born from Atom. If you don't use Atom as the source and cause of all other words, you won't understand it, it'll be gibberish. 
That's why God will confuse the idioms in the days of Nimrod. Nimrod is Adam. It's an anagram for Adam. And idiom is an anagram for Adam. Because he speaks an idiom and has an idea. Here's another one. Eden. Eden backwards in the mirror is nude. Or it's an anagram for nude. So, of course, Adam and Eve are nude in the Garden of Eden because Eden is the word nude. Outside of nudity, when you go out of the Garden of Eden, you put clothes on. Clothes is clothos, the goddess of fate and divinity. And so you go out of nudity, Eden, unity, and you go with clothes, cloths, in the world of duality in time. In Thomas, Tommy and Timmy, old man time, old man Kronos. Whatever is born in time dies in time. And so it's all, look, every single theology, nursery rhyme, teaching, school of wisdom, thought, every um, science, every possible field of learning known to man comes from atom and the ecliptic. The ecliptic is atom. That's what they are. They're one and the same. The name of the ecliptic is atom. And ecliptics are all that there is. There's only one subject and it's the ecliptic. There's nothing else to talk about. Everything you talk about that you've ever talked about and never will talk about is the ecliptic. Mm -hmm. Yes, now another word we just talked today was Stefan about the, the poles and the people words, for example. So people also can be divided into words like pi and pole, like, you know, eternal poles of the many variations we have to choose from. So pi and pole. What's that? I didn't get that. Word people oh. can be divided into words like pi, like number three. Comma fourteen and so on, so on, so on to pole. So high pole in the in the word of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Po uh, pole as in a, a long. As in northern pole or southern pole. So. Like yeah, that. yeah, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's what it is, really. If you look at uh, if you study the box saga, um, the box saga teaches that <clears throat> about people people having to do with the poles of the earth. You're spot on. You're 100% right there. Yeah, that's why we have maybe some so many races in, in, in our on our planet. We have, you know, dark-skinned people, we have white-skinned people, you know, all, all playing with those poles and, you know, the variations of those, uh, uh, I don't know, races of ours are eternal, like number five, so. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and so uh, we've got a few minutes, haven't we? More? How much longer we got? We got a few minutes, yeah. Because I was just going to throw in a few more, unless you've got any subjects to talk about. Sure, I have. Um, I have a story I can tell you. Um, we had on not too long ago, um, David Carr, and it was a nice show. He, uh, um, we were talking about the Coral Castle. Have you heard about that? Yeah, Edward Lee Scanlon. Yeah, right, right, right. And, um, well, interesting, we chatted along, and uh, right then uh, he had this little story, Lee Scanlon, um, that he, uh, when he was asked why he did it, he always would answer, uh, I, 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 did it for, I did it for my sweet 16, right? Yeah, yeah, that number 16. That yeah. number 16. <laughs> So that number, yeah. right? And um, we were—it it just dawned on us, you know, that uh, sixteen makes uh, makes also the number seven, and then makes the letter G. Mm -hmm. And there's your gravity, and that may have just have been part of his little secret, secret you know, his little secret sweet sixteen. And also, he has many many words in English which are ending with G, you know, like going and you know words with ending with G, so. What can that mean? <coughs> yeah, good point. Good point. 
Everything returning back to seven. Going, coming, wanting, having, being. So we get this ing. So really it's a silent G. It's more like an N, but it's nasal. It's, it's in English, this is actually the closest thing we have to the, the French and Portuguese nasal, you know. Uh, like they say, bon, you know, on, and the Portuguese. Um, <clears throat> this is the sound that the English have, which <clears throat> comes closest to it. It's not true nasal, but it's considered as a nasal. So, you know, um, swimming, mm, it finishes in the, in the nasal cavities but um that is supposedly a, a silent g but i you know a lot of people actually pronounce that g you know i went i was singing i was singing singing you know uh, especially a lot of foreigners yeah. uh, <laughs> it's funny because they don't it's, it's very strange but um but there you go isn't it see it disappears as a silent g into the seven there's a lot to think about, guys. I mean, it, it, I'll tell you one thing is it always pays to follow a tangent of thought, you know, like we just followed that tangent of thinking about G and seven, you know, mm -hmm. the G, and why do the nations, why is there a group called the G7 and mm -hmm. why is there, and why is there, um, the Masonic symbol of the G look like the compass and the square look like two sevens encompassing the G. Yeah. And the G, right. the G shows us uh, the circle and the square in the letter because there's a square in the letter G, a corner, and also the circle. Mm -hmm. It's in, yeah, yeah, in it's, the letter itself. Yeah, yeah on the positive side, it, it means... Um, Squaring the circle, you know, and but on the negative side, it is uh, divide and rule. Yeah. It's the divider and the ruler, the compass and the square. So that's our, that's Rome's version, the Jesuit version of divide and conquer. <clears throat> the Freemasons don't do that. <clears throat> they divide and rule. <clears throat> but um, another version is, uh, <clears throat> is the, the G clef in music. Mm -hmm. Why is the G cliff? Why, why is the letter G so important? Aren't we focused on the letter C? Wait a minute. Uh, isn't do re mi fa sol la si do? Isn't do C? Well, why the freaking hell are they so interested in the G that they put that G cliff there? Mm -hmm. Because it's the same G. It's because G is the seventh letter and there are seven notes. It's a septenary, an octave, but it's truly a septenary, a seven, you see, that octave of perfection, the rounded out number, eight, eight, is so perfect, you know, it's number of death and transformation, great transformation. And so, um, that's, that's the point, man, um, seven. It's the, the winged feathered serpent of creation. It's those seven colors of the rainbow, the seven chakras, the seven visible planets, the seven musical notes. But that G, well, I've got a, an Aboriginal friend called um, Brendan Murray. And he is um, he's a jagger jagger, which means, you know, a, a, a king, a great a great one. And he tells me that G is the color red, the bottom chakra, and he says it's the fundamental musical tone of the universe. Now, he might be right, but um, F sharp, right next door to G, is what the Pythagoreans said through the uh, 432 hertz system, they said, um, and by the way, when you reduce 432, you go straight back to the number nine. Four plus three plus two is nine. 
you see so um yeah uh there's a lot to think about this number seven and uh the, the g the g7 so it, you see how much you learn when you go down a tangent it's always worth it guys never never ever think you're wasting time you see i i sometimes just walk around in the barefoot in the in the grass and i'm just looking at the grass or looking at the trees or just yeah. whatever and i'm doing syncretism man i'm just, you know and uh i'm i'm not wasting i don't consider that wasting time being barefoot sure. with nature just um even when i'm got the chainsaw or the whippersnipper and i'm cutting grass here in the forest or something like i'm still meditating uh when i'm playing my guitar i'm still meditating i'm always downloading syncretisms always it's unending in the middle of the night i wake up got my pen there tuck -a -tuck -a -tuck, right 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 yeah it's very beautiful when you're going na to nature you see yourself in every single you know plant and every single you know even the sun you know you see yourself in in completely different mirrors you know and you are able to receive those reflections to yourself. That's why, you know, seeing flower can bring you such happiness, you know, you know, more happiness than money can ever, ever, you know, bring. So because you see that a live mirror of yourself. So it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, good one. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, this is the beautiful thing when you, you when you wake up. I think you you first wake up. Um, you wake up through letters or numbers. You know, um, a lot of people are waking up through numbers. Hence, they contact me via email and ask me, "What's the meaning of one 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 one?" Every time I look at the clock, you know, I'm in the car. I look at the clock and it's an eleven eleven. Uh, or they're noticing they're noticing numbers 23 they notice 23 everywhere or something like that see so they're wake, they're being called and uh chosen from the land of captivity through numbers you know others are being called through letters Perfect. others are being called through love and light you know oh it's all love and light it's love and light and they are being called that way the calling is happening but the chosen a few the captive are many. There's three kinds of people. CCC, the, call, the captives, the called, and the chosen. We are the called for sure. For sure. And to seal the choosing is to remain in the path. That's it. You can't, um, you can't uh, fail because you can't be seduced from... Um, walking away from the path. It's narrow and cramped, but it leads to everlasting life. <clears throat> and the road that leads to, leads to destruction is wide and spacious, but uh, perdition is the uh, reward. And so we need to, um, you know, be of that chosen number. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. 144,000. And of course, 144,000, 144 is a, um, a fractal or, or a, uh, yeah, well, a fractal of uh, 432, so is 72, so is 108, that holy number, 108, so is 9, they all amount to 9, 144, 9, 72, 9, 63, 9, 54, 9, 54 is a half of 108. You'll notice when you drive around town, all the the buildings that are Masonic are around 108, mm -hmm. and they've got bold. They put it. They put it up bold in big gold numbers. One zero eight, to, just to send the message that that's where Masons are. You know, or 54. They have a big bold 54, or or you know any one of those numbers. A thousand and eight, or 18. You know, um, it's, it's it's all there. Yeah, it's very interesting that, you know, 108, if we will plus those letters together, we will have 9 again. And when we plus 54 again together, like 5 and 4, we again will have 9. So what can that signify here? Yeah, well, all of those numbers are 9. Yeah, they all... Um, come back to nine all processional numbers do you know and um 
the nine is that magical number. Tesla said, uh, if you know the secret of three, six, and nine, you know the workings of the of the universe. Now, that secret is manifest to all the ones who know the ecliptic. Um, you know, the ecliptic is um, the ecliptic is the teacher of uh, of uh, all numbers. You see, three is um, is a positive trinity. Um, six is a negative. Nine is neutral. Nine neutral, and um, and then twelve is uh, transitory. But there are three, there are four triads in 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 the sequence of twelve. Four triads, and the first numbers one, two, and three. One is a positive one. Two is positive two. Three is positive three. That's your positive triad. That's your supernal positive triad of the um, of the world of creation. And then four is is but a one, a negative one. Five is but a two, a negative two. Six is negative three. And then seven, this is why seven is so beautiful, because seven is a negative, uh, a neutral, now begins the neutral uh, triad. So we've just done one to three positive triad, four to six negative triad. And then um, seven starts the uh, the beautiful, magical, they're all magical numbers, but this, this neutral triad, this is exquisite. Seven, eight, and nine. Oh, I mean, God loves nothing more than seven. We, we already, no need to, no discussion. Seven is just, it stands out anyway, you know. Um, eight is just, well, that's the cycle buster, isn't it? You know, uh, it is death and transformation all in the one package. It's the phoenix. It's what an enchanting number. It's, it's the sign of Scorpio, the eighth sign, hence the eagle is the symbol of Scorpio and the eagle is the phoenix. And what are Scorpios? Well, they are the signs of most creativity. They are bursting with, with they are very creative. They are, they are super powerhouses of creation. And that's because, uh, you know, it's the, it rules the generative system um, in the 12 systems of the body. And it rules um, that part of the ecliptic and uh, the, the number eight. And we and could also seven, take eight and we, you know, switch eight to, to the side we would have the symbol of for eternity, you know. And again, the reproductive uh, sphere of the Scorpio, just everything falls to place. Yeah, good on you. Exactly. And then nine, of course, well, that's the perfect, perfect. It's more perfect than seven, but you, you, can't, you can't say that. But, but nine is just, it's like one. It has so much obvious charm about it nine absorbs all other numbers nine is the hero you know um and and uh it's it's um it's the last of the neutral triad and um the the wonderful thing about nine i was going to say oh, i had a great point and i just it just uh fled my mind uh about nine but then, anyway, I'll get back to that. And then uh, 10, 11, 12, this is the transitory uh, triad. And when you place this system along the ecliptic, you've got positive spring, negative summer. Summer is negative because the sun is now waning, negative. Um, autumn is neutral and winter is transitory. There's no fire elements in winter. And so the creation force of Aries cardinal fire is uh, snuffed out in Sagittarius on 21st of December, St. Thomas Day, and hence Saturn begins his rule in winter, and there is no fire there, hence there is no creative radiation, and it's a transitory period. That's what winter is, the Iron Age. It's transitory. And um, when, you, when you look at it this way, Man, you can't you can't miss any detail. You just syncretisms just come and come and exponentially grow, 
and um, just hang on to your seats, guys. Yeah, if you knew, if I could download <clears throat> and share what I get downloaded every day, guys, you would be exhausted. I'm telling you, you would be exhausted if you had, if I could just even just transmit the downloads that I'm getting every day. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Santos, for doing that because <clears throat> you were one of the main reasons, you know, why we started our work, you know, just made an inspiration for us. So, you know, many people are waking up because of the beautiful job you're doing. So, thank you a lot for that. Yeah, you're doing a lot of shows lately, yes. and uh, uh, that's you know that's what we can do. Just present like a a little cozy corner where you can just let us all know until we remember. How how that get transported without talking <laughs> again? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. One day we won't be we won't be um, using our atomic tongues and teeth dent um, to um, to say and express these in verbs. Verb is the word of God, by the way. Verb. Um, we will be telepathically uh, doing it. So that's what the day when we will know all things because we will share everybody's um, knowledge through telepathy and we won't have all these divisions, you can see. But this syncretism is the forerunner to that telepath telepathic age. First, we must, you know, embrace syncretism. You can't. It's not going to be gifted. Tele telepathy won't be gifted to the anthropoids out there. <laughs> you know, sorry to have to call our brothers and sisters anthropoids, but, you know, I mean, um, I subscribe to the Muraviev, uh, you know, way view of seeing the world as the Adamites, we the soul, the soul people, and the anthropoids, the soulless ones, you know. They're, they're just of a lower evolution. I'm afraid there are two castes. There's, it is a caste system. It's the it's the awake and the asleep. And the asleep are just, uh, well, they're, you're a dumbass. You know, they're dumbasses. I was one. I was a dumbass for 47 years, uh, 43 years of my life. A jackass. I was, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I still do some dumb shit, you know, <laughs> but, um, uh, and sometimes I look at myself like a fly in the wall and think, man, you just, you just some dumb jackass, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and this is why I urge people, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> um, and so we should, and we should do it. Yeah. It's our duty, man. We, we, we can't, we can't be sleepers anymore. We can't uh, subscribe to that. It's tyranny. Yeah. And also, I just like very, very, very nicely your your interpretation and your myth. You know, you talked about the three heroes, about you know Jupiterian hero and you know Neptunian heroes, and how they are connecting. Like first hero only saves himself, and the second saves you know. The avarice and about Jupiter and Hero talked about as well. So maybe could you share that again, you know, for such beautiful conclusion of, of our show today? So damn everything in such beautiful notes. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think it's from um, the legend is originally Platonic, or at least uh, Plato. Um, uh, Reconveyed this message from ancient syncretic schools of thought. I mean, Plato, yes, was a genius, but um, you know, <laughs> no one makes this stuff up. He didn't, you know, he didn't. He just stumbled across it like Thomas Edison, you know, just and all all of the other uh, so-called discoverers. Discover, discover. You know, when you discover is you just pull the blanket off and you dis you discover the blanket. You take it off as a cover. So you're only uncovering. So you Thomas the Edison over. Yeah, Thomas Edison with his light globe just uncovered it. It was already there. And so um the cave of the nymph and um 
and the uh, the gates of men and the gates of God, Cancer being the gate the gate of man, Capricorn the gate of the gods, and um, the journey of the um, the hero as he goes through and he um, looks for his um, well his way home, you know, through syncretism, and um, he. He goes through the you know the Neptunian, Plutonium, Neptunian, and Jupiterian um, uh, heroes. You see that the the Plutonian is is your hero, like your, your war heroes and your sport sporting heroes, and 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 those type of heroes. You see, um, they do heroic actions in the carnal flesh. And um, that's the sleeping state, really. And uh, nonetheless, it is man, you know, achieving. It is man going forward. It's not man going backwards. And then your um, Neptunian is the uh, is the hero like Hercules who saved himself but could not save his friends. They were seduced by the moon, the church, Kirke turned his men into swine, but he ran away and got saved and returned to Penelope, the higher mind. And she uh, discarded all the suitors because um, Penelope is not going to take any bum. She's going to wait for her man to return better. And he did. He saved himself. So he's a Neptunian hero. Whereas Jupiter is more like um, your other... Um, gospel type heroes like Jesus he saves he saves others you see so not only do you save yourself but you save others and how you do this is you um, help people to change the course of their lives and so um, you and I we're we're doing this uh, savior business we're in the salvage salvation business I wouldn't say salvage because um, that's has literal literal connotations to it. Well, salvation, you know, has more of a uh, spiritual and agogic approach to it. And so, um, but, you know, you, each one needs to put uh, their meaning to each word, okay? So um, these may not even be very suitable words for um, what we're doing, but um, spreading the light is certainly saving people, um, you know, spreading the love, Uh it is. It's a work of salvation. And so, yeah, we're blessed to have found it and we're blessed to be doing it. And um, let us let us continue. Bravo. Let's do it. Wonderful words. Well, Santos, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, we, wow, we, we covered a whole bunch of ground today. And uh, rediscovered a whole bunch flip the disc over again it's always it's always good to hear you always good to have you yeah yep for sure <laughs> all right and um good luck with your uh with your cleanse ongoing yeah well i'm living the dream um uh, dream d-e-m adam <clears throat> dream or <laughs> drama Take your pick. Um, uh, and many people do live a melodrama, let me tell you that, <laughs> on their wheel of dharma, their dharma wheel. <laughs> we're here mm. for dharma. That's what we're doing. We're doing dharma. Yep. There's a the free will we're, again, right? <laughs> yeah. We're doing time. Same word. Time, dharma, it's all atomic. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, what was I saying? Now, now I got off track. Yeah, you're definitely living living in a dream because you know we're just oh. talking to you. We hear birds singing. You know, we're just like calling oh, yeah. to to heavens. <laughs> was a rooster at the beginning of the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, awesome man. Look, I've got, yeah, we've got oh all the fruit trees here. We've got a permaculture forest. Uh, here, there's everything. You know, cherries, apples, pomegranates, uh, locusts. Uh, oh man, we got tons of stuff we've got um it's just it's just beautiful this is the way to live and the, the best thing about it is the raw food stuff that we're doing now mm -hmm. and um 
my wife's just cooking, cooking, I shouldn't say cooking, <laughs> preparing um, raw food dishes, all kinds of amazing dishes. Every, every day they get tastier and more exotic. And, um, you know, and the reason I said, uh, did I speak about uh, cooked food before? No, I didn't. But because um, I tasted some cooked food yesterday and it tasted disgusting, it tasted like manure. Once you've been on raw food for you know more than a month, phew, it's terrible. Yeah, so happy for you, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll um we'll catch up with you the next one then. Right, have a good one. See you soon, bye. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so bright, 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 shine, shine, shine. Bright, bright, bright. So bright, bright.